Watson Grinding and Manufacturing, a trusted provider of machining, grinding, and thermal spray coatings for more than 50 years, is proud to present our state-of-the-art metallurgical coatings laboratory. It's our commitment to provide the highest quality thermal spray coatings in the industry, and our ISO 17025-2005 accredited lab enhances the quality and repeatability of our high-performance coatings. The Watson Coatings Lab is accredited by A2LA as an ISO 17025-2005 compliant facility. This accreditation verifies the use of a system aimed at producing consistent, valid, and unbiased results. The attributes of a thermal spray coating are highly affected by the metal powder used. There are many suppliers and consistency varies, so we test our powder in-house to confirm its properties. Powders will vary and behave differently with different thermal spray systems, so we take that into consideration when applying the coating. The Hall flow rate tells us how the powder will flow or behave in the hopper and powder feed line during the coating's process. It is measured by weighing a specific mass of powder and then timing it as it flows through a Hall flow meter's calibrated orifice. The density of a metal powder indicates the density of the final coating it will produce when applied. The apparent density of a metal powder is measured by filling a container of definite volume under controlled conditions with the powder and then weighing it. The mass of powder per unit volume is calculated and reported as apparent density. We use a process known as powder sieve analysis to determine the particle size distribution of our powders. Particle size distribution of a given powder is important when determining thermal spray capability and fine-tuning spray gun parameters. Once we have established the particle size distribution, our operators can accurately set the optimal distance from spray gun to part. Coarser materials tend to need more time in the plume to heat up versus finer materials which will melt more quickly. After we've tested the powder, it is sent to our robotic thermal spray facility where it's applied to parts or test coupons. At this point, we can perform additional testing on the applied coating itself. In order to prepare the specimen for testing, we polish it to a precise level exposing a subsurface microstructure. We refer to this process as metallographic preparation. The exposed microstructure is then examined using a light optical microscope. At this stage, we examine the coating for evidence of unmelted particles, metallic inclusions, voids, porosity, spalling, micro-cracking, and bond line embedded contaminants. Metallic coatings can also be examined for oxide content. This step is necessary to prepare the specimen for additional testing. Porosity is a key factor in thermal spray coating quality because a less porous, denser coating will be tougher and will generally form a better seal. Following metallographic preparation, we measure the area percent porosity of thermal spray coatings using a software program that detects porous regions and colorizes them red with 250 nanometer accuracy. Higher than specified porosity can cause a reduction in the cohesive bonding strength and Vickers hardness, reducing the coating's overall toughness and wear resistance. Bondline contamination test measures the percentage of grit media embedded into the substrate below an applied thermal spray coating. These contaminants can change surface roughness leading to uncertainty in the coating's bond strength. Less bondline contaminants mean a higher quality final coating. We take a metallographically prepared microstructure and measure the bondline embedded contaminants in its coating using a digital microscope. It's especially important to minimize bondline contaminants in ceramic coatings without a metal bond coat. The adhesion test allows us to quantify the adhesion strength of a coating to a substrate. A 1 inch diameter cylindrical test piece is coated on one side and attached to a load fixture using a high strength epoxy adhesive. The tensile load is then applied until the point of rupture. This test determines the maximum load force it took to separate the coating from the substrate and or the epoxy. The result is the minimum adhesion or cohesion strength of a coating to a substrate, that is, unless the epoxy failed before the coating. This is one of the most important quality control tests we perform. Coating thickness is an important factor in the performance of a coating in service and is usually specified in a manufacturing specification. Following metallographic preparation, coating thickness is measured by taking cross sections of metal and oxide coatings and examining them using an image analyzer. Using this process, we can identify the coating thickness as well as possible deficiencies within uniform coatings. 
Thicker coatings can permit the use of less noble materials in more extreme environments. In such cases, coating thickness will be specified. Coating thickness testing ensures an absolute verifiable thickness of our coating. Hardness testing is important because it indicates how the coating or substrate may perform under certain pressures and media. The coating in the substrate must be harder than the media and also able to withstand pressure. Hardness is measured by using a micro-indentation Vickers hardness tester on a metallographically prepared microstructure. A Vickers diamond indenter creates an indentation in a test specimen and the Vickers hardness value is determined as a function of the dimension of the indentation in the gram load force. The Rockwell Hardness Test is an indentation hardness test that can provide useful information about substrate materials prior to coating. Here the Rockwell C hardness value is determined by the depth of penetration of the indenter. The hardness of the substrate is typically customer driven and should be strong enough to perform its intended purpose. The coating is then applied on top of and is supported by the substrate. The Tabor Abrasion Test quantifies the ceramic coating's wear resistance to particle shedding on the surface. During this test, coated panels are rotated while in contact with a rotating wear surface made of silicon carbide. The panels are cleaned and weighed after a specific number of cycles and the data is compared to previous coatings. This may be useful for measuring scratch resistance, cleavage, and particle shedding of the coating. As part of our commitment to quality coatings and efficiency, we utilize the Acura Spray Plume Sensor System in our robotic thermal spray facility. This system provides a real-time evaluation of the average particulate temperature, velocity, and flow rate during the coatings process. The vertical position and profile of the plume are recorded and compared to predetermined tolerances. Our experience has shown the reproduction of quality coatings depends heavily on the ability to monitor and control these key variables. For more information about Watson Grinding's thermal spray coatings capabilities, visit us online at www.watsongrinding.com.